Hi everybody. I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Excel to hopefully increase your chances of winning a lotto uh, or any kind of lottery game that's available out there. I'm going to use a Florida lotto as, as an example. Uh, here in Florida for the lotto we have a 1 in 23 million chance of winning and if you choose quick pick your chances are that much worse. You got to figure that the computer is randomly selecting six numbers for you and then when the, the numbers are drawn, you have to get those same six numbers. I don't know exactly what the odds increase to, but they're much, much worse. If you use Microsoft Excel, you can grab all the winning number history, manipulate it so where it shows the, the most frequent winning numbers are at top, and the least frequently winning numbers are at the bottom, or you can you know, sort that the other way if you'd like. So hopefully your chances of winning are, are that much higher. Stati statisticians are gonna say that this doesn't work, every drawing is independent, which is true, but there's a reason certain numbers are, are more frequent and it may help you at least win some of the, the smaller uh, winning denominations. So Florida Lottery makes you know, this job a, a little easier. They have a winning number history here. I'm not sure about other states, but they have an HTML section here. You select that. And you can see that you have two columns of dates. And the Florida lottery goes all the way down to 1988. So we're not going to grab all the way down to 1988. I'm just going to show you how to do this for example purposes, but you can go all the way to the beginning of the history. Uh, there is some data manipulation you have to do in order to make this a little bit more user-friendly. So I'm going to grab this information all the way down to past where this text is so I can show you how to, how to get rid of that text. But you can go all the way down, like I said. I'm going to hit a control C, copy that information, and just drop it right in. I'm going to hit a control V and drop it right into my spreadsheet. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of this text. So I'm gonna highlight this area that I wanna delete. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna delete that. And if you would have gone down and grabbed more dates, then you'd have to do that. You have to get rid of the text for each. And then I'm gonna go up and I'm going to, for whatever reason, this these blank cells appear under the first date in the Florida Lotto, so I'm going to go delete those cells. So now I have my first set of six numbers with a date, and then the second set of six numbers with different dates. Now I want to, you can see how there's some merged cells here. It's a lot easier if the cells are not merged. So I'm going to highlight my entire spreadsheet, click on Merge and Center, which is going to unmerge all the, the cells. It just takes a minute. All right, so now all my cells are unmerged. And now I have to get all the columns to, to line up. I'm going to grab the, the, the second uh, set of dates and put it under the first set of dates just to make manipulation much easier. But you can see that between the date and the first number, I have one column, then I have three columns and three columns, three columns, three columns, and four columns. And then with the multiplier, I have one column. So if I go over to the second set of numbers, you can see I have two columns. So I'll have to get rid of that column. Then I have three, 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 Scroll over a little bit more, three and then three. I actually need four columns here, so I'm gonna insert a column. And then between the last number and the multiplier, I have two columns, I have to delete that. So now everything should line up. I'm gonna grab the second column, or second set of numbers. Highlight everything. There we go, and I'm gonna hit cut, because I don't want those numbers there anymore. I'm gonna to go to the bottom of the first set, and I'm gonna 
Just paste that information in there and you can see that everything lines up. So personally, I don't want all this blank space in there. So I'm going to start deleting columns out of there, get all the numbers next to each other. So I just highlight the columns I don't want, delete them. You have to make sure all the numbers are lined up before you do this or you're going to have missing information. And really, I don't use this multiplier column, so I'm just going to get rid of that too. So you can see that all the numbers are together, but I do have some blank cells in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight all this information. And you can do the entire page. You don't have to highlight just this. But in order to get rid of the blank cells, you go to F5. You go to Special. Select Blanks. Hit OK. And you can see all the blank spaces are highlighted. You just hit Delete. And now they're gone. So you have all the numbers together. I am going to add columns. So you can see I've already done this. Like I said, I'm going to grab this information. You'll have to enter it on your own. And then I'm going to paste it in here. So I have all my numbers with the date ranges 1 through 6. Next thing I want to do, as you can see on this spreadsheet, is that there's 53 numbers in the Florida Lottery. So I want to have all those numbers available. And then I want to count how many times those numbers appear in all the, the data. So I'm going to just take these, take the headers. Actually, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to paste them with the same column width. So for the number count, I'm just going to put the number one in the I2 cell. And then in the I3 cell, I'm going to say equals I2 plus 1. And then, oops, I'm reaching here, I2 plus 1. So you can see that the number 2 appears. You can take that, control C, copy that formula all the way down. And 54 minus 1 is 53. So you can see that you have 53 numbers. Now for the number, you want to be able to count how many times the number 1 appears in column 1. Or, you know, in column B, I should say, in the first column. So the way you do that is another formula. Equals count if parentheses. Now... You want the column to move. Let me think this through here. You want to keep the row stationary. So in order to be able to do that, you're going to select column B because you want to grab all the data in this column. And the first number is in B2, but you don't want the row to change. So you put dollar sign 2. And then you want to go all the way down to the bottom of the column, which is 205. And then you do B dollar sign 205. And then you want to count this number. So you have to tell it which cell that number's in. But you want the column to change. I'm sorry, you want the column to stay stationary. So you use the dollar sign I to and parenthesis, and then you see that the number one in the first column appeared 36 times. And then you can take this information, control, you can take that formula, control C, and paste it over to the other columns. And then in the total column, you wanna sum up J through O. So equals sum, parentheses J2, to O2, and you'll see that if you add J2 to O2, 
equals 36. And you can see that 36 plus a bunch of zeros equals 36. Now you can take this information, highlight it, copy it, go down, control V, paste it. And you see that the number one appeared a total of 36 times, number two appeared 23 times, number three appeared 23 times, and so on and so forth. You want to take your number count column and your total column, and you can move it over wherever you want, but you want to be able to, to do a sort. So you take column I, you can do a control C again, move over to column R, and you want to paste values. Right now, they're formulas. So if you paste values, it becomes numbers. So if you look at this, you got a formula. You come over to the same, you got an actual number. That's needed in order to do a, a, a data sort. So you do the same thing with column P. Copy, paste values, and then you have that. So if you want, you know, the number one, 36 times, so on and so forth, it's the same as that, but once again, you have your formula and you have an actual num numeric value. If you want your, your headers to be consistent, you can do a format painter and just click that. It'll highlight it and underline it automatically for you. Now you can take these columns, go to data, sort. You, you have headers. If you don't, you unselect that box. And then I want to sort it by total or whatever you call that column. And then I want to go from largest to smallest, or you can do smallest to largest, whatever you prefer. And you'll see that the number one appeared 36 times. That was the, the most frequent uh, winning number. Number 20, 33, 47, 32, 48, 32. And there's six numbers that you need to select in the Florida lottery. So here they are. Here are the numbers that have appeared most frequently over the date range that I selected. Now, if you think that the numbers that haven't appeared as frequently are due to come up, you can just go down to the bottom or resort it, and you have those numbers. So instead of using Quick Pick, I recommend selecting your own numbers. It's a little bit more work, but this is a great way to do it. You may not win the, the big prize, but maybe you'll win the 80, 100 bucks, even a, a few thousand dollars. Um, you know, a little bit more frequently. So good luck with everything. Thanks for watching. And hopefully, hopefully you win a lot of take care. Bye bye.